Hello, this is Tammy, Plays Well with Paper, guest designer for Whimsy Stamps today. And I'm admitting that I did not send out Christmas cards this year. In fact, I haven't sent out Christmas cards for several years. Uh, but I decided I wanted to send out some cards. And so I picked St. Patrick's Day. I'm going to send out St. Patrick's Day cards this year. And so I went on the Whimsy Stamps site and I found all of these amazing St. Patrick's Day stamps and papers and dies and things like that. And so I'm going to share with you some of the things that I pulled from the site that I'm going to be using. And I'm going to be doing a series of cards. And so I pulled these toner cards and you get eight card fronts. So two of each design with the toner prints on them. And so I'm going to be making some cards with the toners, uh, toner card fronts, and also these uh, quick card fronts that are gnomes and kind of St. Patrick's themed so you can kind of see they have these cute little gnomes and uh, some of them are kind of very St. Patrick's-y, but others could just be sent as just a fun, silly card to a friend. And you also get eight card fronts and you get the set of uh, sentiments with them, uh, all in a set of A2 cards. So I will be using those with some of the dies and some of the stamps. And you know, Whimsy Stamps has wonderful slimline products. And so they have this great shamrock die. They have the St. Patrick's Day slimline paper pack. And look at all these amazing St. Patrick's Day patterns. I just love that wood grain. And then these that were on the diagonal, a lot of hats and wonderful green patterns and things like that to use. So I will definitely be using the Slimline Paper Pack for several cards. And then I went through and I pulled some stamps. So uh, and I even pulled an Easter stamp because I use, um, I, I celebrate St. Patrick's Day as a religious holiday. And so I wanted to have some cards that uh, had some uh, just basic St. Patrick's greetings like on this one and the hats and the shamrocks and then some others that had a little more of a religious overtone for some of my other friends and family. So these are just some of the stamps that I pulled that I thought had some great sentiments and great images that I could use and then an oldie bit of goodie one of my favorites the tartan plaid background um, red rubber stamp definitely be using that as well. So those are some of the products that I'm going to be using from the Whimsy Stamps site um, over this series. So I'm going to be doing quite a few cards. Uh, but for my first card set, I decided to go with that Slimline uh, paper pack and I used some pre-made card bases that were a little smaller than a normal A2 size. So I measured and I cut those slim lines to fit and then that left me a little piece that I could uh, make a second card out of. So once I got all of the backgrounds cut, I decided to choose my focal point and I picked the St. Patrick's Day gold stamp set. And I liked this circular stamp. So um, I thought it would be fun to color it with Distress watercolor pencils. And these are the colors that I picked to color in this um, focal point and so I picked evergreen boughs, scattered straw, shabby shutters, and uh, mowed lawn. And then I cut out some two and a half inch circles and on my stamp platform or if you have a misty or whatever, uh, when I cut out the circles I saved one of the outlines and then that way I could center this stamp so that it would fit on the circle and I could just stamp and stamp and stamp and uh, always have it in the right spot because I can just fit all my circles back in there. And I have a little sticky grid to hold them in place. And so I stamped a whole bunch of this focal point stamp from the St. Patrick's Gold. And now I'm coloring it in with my Distress watercolor pencils. So I'm just kind of coloring right now. And I'm doing two versions, one with a gold center and one with the evergreen bow center that was a little bit blue. The outside circle I colored in mowed lawn and then I did just the very outside of each one with some scattered straw and the clovers I colored with the mowed lawn and the shabby shutters. 
uh, and then just blended them out. So right now I'm blending them out with my watercolor brush. And then I decided for the portion that had the, the, just the part of the slimline paper that I wanted a, an extra sentiment on the bottom. So I cut some sentiment strips and then I pulled three of the small clovers off of the Swirled Shamrock stamp set. And to match the Distress watercolor pencils, I chose Mowed Lawn Distress Oxide and I stamped those three clovers. And then I also used a sentiment off of the Swirled Shamrock and stamp that over the little shamrocks. And then that will fit perfectly below my focal point. Now that all of my main images are stamped and I have colored them with the Distress Watercolor pencils, I wanted to show you an additional step that I have added. And uh, I used a, a product that you may or may not be familiar with, so I want to take just a minute to discuss it, and that is Distress Micro Glaze. So this is a really interesting product. It feels like Vaseline when you're putting it on, but it's actually not greasy at all. When you put it on, it's this, just the strangest product. And it, then it evaporates, uh, but it leaves behind uh, kind of a little film that causes the inks and the paper to be water resistant. Now that is not waterproof, uh, but water resistant in the sense that if um, I sprayed a little bit of water over this, it would bead up on top of it, it because it's been sealed with the micro glaze. And it would also keep the distressed watercolor pencils or oxides or distress inks from reacting to the water, which they are made to do. And so it does seal it enough to uh, make it stable. And like I said, water resistant. So... Let me also show you the difference between the two. So much like Distress Oxides, the watercolor pencils are an opaque pigment. And so when you are coloring over something that you have stamped, oftentimes they will leave either a, com a color completely covering it or um, kind of a chalky finish to it. And so if you look at this and this one, you can see that there is a bit of a chalky finish over the black soot stamped area. Now, this is fine to me. I would just normally leave this because if I'm using my Distress pencils or my oxides, I expect that look and I really am going for that look, that kind of opaque chalkiness. I really love it. However, the paper that I'm using is somewhat glossy and also, the card base is a deep black color. Therefore, I really want the stamping on here to stand out and to be black. And I can't, because it was just a circle, I, I can't get it back into my stamping platform to make sure that I get, I could, I can re-stamp over it. So that's one way that you could do this if you wanted the black stamping to stand out again. You could put it back in and re-stamp over it. But again, like I said, I don't have any way to make sure that I got this in exactly right. And so uh, I would probably end up ruining the stamping. So that's why I turned to the micro glaze. So the micro glaze, let's look at these two. This one I have micro glazed, and this is the one that is just colored with the pencils. And do you see how much more vibrant the black is on this one? And even the colors are a little more vibrant on the one with the micro glaze. So let me show you how to do that. You're gonna take one that doesn't have the micro glaze on it. You're going to take a tiny bit on your finger, and it's just the tiniest bit. You don't have to, it's not thick at all. Close it because, like I said, it will evaporate. And I start in the center and then I go out. And I don't know if you could see it already changing right away. Just starting out in the center there. But I usually go in some circles all the way around and work it in. And then I'll set it aside and let it kind of do the evaporation thing. And then I'll do it again. So let me see if I can zoom in so that you can really see 
the change that takes place. And again, just the tiniest amount on my finger and watch this. Look at that. Okay. You can already see just with a little bit in the center. And then as I work my way out, how it just pulls that ink up to the surface and really makes it vibrant again. And then I'll set that aside. Now, once they're completely dry, what I will usually do is I will take a clean inky binky or something like that, and I will buff the top quickly and get any excess off, and then you're done, you're good to go. I'm almost finished, but I needed to add one last little thing to the fronts. So I went through my pack of pattern papers and I chose a few that I thought would probably maybe be the best for the fronts of the cards. And I cut them into one inch strips all the way across so that I ended up with eight one by three and a half inch pieces of paper. And I put them on each of the cards, uh, the ones that I thought went best with the fronts. And then I'm going to cut them in half and just do a little pennant end or fishtail end, whatever you call it. And then I'll attach that under each of these. Now this step may be going a little too far for some of you, but I felt like I wanted something a little, I don't know, sparkly. So I covered the sentiments and I covered the focal point and I took a little bit of gold paint and just splattered it on the front. And I really liked that little addition. The other thing I did was that I drew in with a black pen around the edge instead of sewing. And I thought that added a nice little touch too. But if you like clean and simple, just forget both of those. I'm really excited that I got 17 cards out of my making session with the Slimline card pack and the St. Patrick's Day gold stamp set. These went together really quickly and I had a really great time. I hope that you enjoyed this quick tutorial and introduction to my St. Patrick's Day series. And if you did enjoy it, we would really appreciate if you would leave a comment, give us a like. And I also wanna make sure that you're following Whimsy Stamps on all their social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, and here on YouTube. And if you'll be sure that you hit the subscribe button, you won't miss out on any of the great inspiration and new products.